Hey there. <coughs> Excuse me, just taking a drink. It's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And I am really excited about today's video because, um, well, let's just say I had a lot of fun with my April, what is it, Changes Beautiful Paper Pumpkin Kit. So let me show you and we'll make a couple cards. First of all, let's look at what's in the kit. So the first thing that you see here is the advertisement for next month. Next month is all about the new end colors and Stampin' Up! has thrown some golden vouchers in random kits. Excuse me, and the golden vouchers are worth $25 US and $34 in Canadian money um, that you can just spend on products. So that's next month's kit. So you need to sign up or be um, subscribed before May 10th to get this kit. Okay, but that's not what we're looking at. So then in Paper Pumpkin, you always get an ink spot. This time it was um, Mel and Mumbo. And you get the little stamp set. Let's see if I can find a piece of paper. Oh, no, I'll show you in a little bit what the stamp set looks like. It's easier to see on those printouts that you can print out at paperpumpkin.com. So we'll look at what's on the stamp set later when it's easier to see. And then your instructions, right? All colored, pretty, your little ruler, the suggestions for other colors and other projects. Great, that piece of paper. We got these pretty little, like, rocky-looking pearl iridescent bling. And, um dimensionals and then I'm gonna try to get everything out of the box here and put the box away so we can and then I'll show you they get the die cuts like this right oh and then the envelopes okay now these cards um, there's nine cards three each of three different designs two of them are fancy folds but let me show you what I did with the cards and two of them I'm going to make with you today. That way, in case you want to make your cards like that, I'll show you how it's done. The first card is this one with the moon on it. That it Basically, this is how the kit says it should look. Like this. Oh, there we go. And it just opens up like that. Now, the only stamping here is this every day is a new day. And um, But I did them different. I cut my bases down um, a quarter of an inch. So really, this I cut the card base down to five and a fourth by four because I like to put this extra layer back there. I like the layering effect. So I did add that. That's different than what the kit calls. But this is what the kit card, as you can see here, would look like. But then I watched Rachel Tessman, the queen of paper pumpkin, right? And she did a card that looked like this. So I took this these three um, card bases and I did the cards like this, like hers. Now this paper, is the new in color 2022 through 2024 glimmer paper. This would be available, this glimmer paper back here will be available in the new catalog May 4th. Third, fourth, oh shoot, I should know that, but anyway. And this one is that ombre glimmer paper that's retiring in the annual catalog till May 4th. So that's what those cards are. Well, look how cute those are. The only thing I did different than Rachel's, and if you go to my blog, BeCreatedWithKathy.com, you'll see when you see this card, there's a link to Rachel's video. So if you want to see how she did this card, you can see it there. And I, the only thing I did different was I did add some um, Wink of Stella to my moon because I thought it needed a little bit more on the front. And I think this one, I even added the Wink of Stella onto the stars too. But that way it gives that plain and, um, front a little bit more pizzazz. And I haven't even stamped mine yet because I'm not quite sure what I want to do with this card. The other thing I did different is Rachel used this star. The other side is white, so she used this star here, but I went ahead and used the star that goes with this card. See like this, it comes in these um, pieces here. I went ahead and used that star on the thing there, but that's, that's that card. Okay, so then when you make Rachel's card like this, you have this piece, this inside piece, here left over so then well let's make a card out of that and look how cute that little songbird now this is a new um punch bundle that you'll find in the new catalog starting may 3rd or 4th i think it's may 3rd but anyway look how cute i just took these clouds here that are part of the card and turned them over and sponged them a little bit and then they stand out on the card and look how cute i think that card is adorable 
with that. So that's what I did. I'm still going to finish this one, but that's what I did with this card of the kit. Okay, let's look at the next one. So the next one is this one here, right? It's supposed to look kind of like this. There again, I cut the card base down to five and a fourth by four and added a piece of Bermuda Bay here, right? Which is kind of a bummer because on the back, this is what the, the um, base looks like when you take it out of the kit. And the back has a place here that if you used a clear envelope, you could just write the address and put your card in the clear envelope and have everything right there. But I like that extra layer, so I went ahead and put it onto a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock. But then when you have a base like this, you could take and make a card that looks like this. So this is no big deal, right? That's the front. But this is called a bay window card, and look how it stands up like that. So let's go ahead real quick and make this card using this piece of the um, or of the space of the paper pumpkin. Now I do have to tell you for this card, I did go back, let me grab it here, to last month. This is how I store my paper pumpkin kits. I print out those um, sheets from paperpumpkin.com so you could see the stamp set better here. In fact, let me show you because this is this is what oh my all oh, thumbs. This is what this month's paper pumpkin looks like. You can see the stamp so much easier when it's printed like this. And then I would just take my stamp set and I tuck it between those folds and I store my paper pumpkin right in there. And then I have it at a fingertip. I can flip through the pages and find the stamp set I want. In fact, this is the stamp set we're going to use for this card. This was the free one from last month but it makes your paper pumpkin stamp sets more, I think, easier to find and what you want to use. Okay, so now I have my stamp set. Let's mount those two stamps. The time to celebrate. And then sending birthday wishes. Make a birthday card here. Nope, that's not the right stamp. I got the wrong one. Okay, so the sending birthday wishes is in the... Which stamp set is that from? It isn't. It's in this stamp. It's in this stamp set. <laughs> I told you it's easier to see which one. You know what? I put my stamp sets together wrong because this is the stamp set that's supposed to go with this stamp, so I have a feeling this stamp, I have the sending birthday wishes in there. All right, you know what? I can't figure it out. I have the wrong stamp with the wrong <laughs> stamp and I'll have to fix that. So I won't stamp the inside, but you'll get the picture of what I'm talking about. That's embarrassing. And this is Bermuda Bay. It's 11, um, 11 inches by four and a fourth, and I've already scored it at five and a half, but let's do some more scoring. I got my little cheat sheet here. I'm going to score it at 3 eighths. So first I'm going to do it this way. So 3 eighths is 1, 2, 3 eighths right there. Oops, get my cutting blade out of here and score it at 3 eighths. And then I'm going to turn it over like this because then I want to score it again at 1 and 7 eighths. and then three and five eighths. And again, you don't have to worry about these measurements. You can just go to my blog, BeCreativeWithKathy.com, and all these measurements are on there too. And then this is gonna be at five and one eighth. And then again at that five and a half, and now I've already have that scored because that's the center of our card base. So we have that, then while we're at it, let's go ahead and take that card base from the kit and cut it down to size. So with we want these three um, sections of designers or of this paper to fit into these three between these three score lines. So this first one is gonna be cut down to one and three eighths. However, our paper's too tall, we need to cut the whole thing down to four inches first. So I'm gonna just take it like this at that four inches and cut it down. There we go. Now it's the right size. And then we wanna cut it down to one 
and then one, two, three eighths. So one and three eighths. Let me count again. One, two, three. There we go. One and three eighths. I'm going to cut that because then that one's going to fit perfectly. Yes, it does. Yay, right there. This one is one and five eighths. So we're going to ignore this score line here. Now you're going to have that score line on your card, but we're going to cover it up with the butterfly and kind of disguise it. So we're really not going to worry about it. But the one and five eighths is just an eighth past the one and a half. So we're going to take it right there and cut that one. So then that one will fit right here on our card. And I hope I'm in screen because um, my computer messed up and I've lost my mirroring and I can't see my hands anymore. But you have to bear with me. So then this last piece here needs to be one and three eighths. So one, two, three eighths right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we have this piece that will fit right there on our card. So then this piece is gonna be the inside. I'm gonna just turn it this way and cut it five and a fourth and cut that down. And then I'm gonna hang on to this piece here because this is what we're gonna stamp our greeting on. But we're all done with this. Let's set this aside until we need to cut our greeting. We'll go ahead and put our designer series paper onto our card. Let me fold on those score lines first. I tell you what, you don't know how much you appreciate your internet until you have problems with it. And that's what, I have an internet issues and that's why I can't see my hands now. We'll just have to guess that I'm in the right spot. Okay, so let's go back. I'm gonna fold back on this one and I'm gonna kind of fold back on this score line to make sure it's really nice and loose, I'm gonna call it. So this little score line here, we're gonna put some liquid glue or some of this Tombow green glue, whatever you call it. You could also use um, Seal Plus or the tear and tape here, but we just need to um, glue this section down right here, that little score line. We're gonna go like that. I'm gonna make sure it's nice and secure like that. There we go. So that's our piece there. Then, with, like we said, we'll put these pieces down. Let's just get some um, stamp and seal here. And lay this one right here. And then this one. This is the one and five eighths. But there again, uh, all these measurements are on my blog. So if you need the measurements, you just have to go there. And there'll be a link in the description too. Or you could search Paper Pumpkin on my blog and that's how you would find my Paper Pumpkin videos. But we're gonna put that one right there. So now we have our three pieces and we have our bay thing done. So let's go ahead and take this one. Now I would stamp on there first before I put it in there, but since I <laughs> got my stamps mixed up, I guess we'll stamp on it afterward. And I'm gonna take this piece and just layer. Oh, and I forgot this piece is shorter. That's my bad. It shouldn't have been five and a fourth. We need to cut that down to four and three fourths. Let me grab my trimmer. Let's see which side. I want to keep the birds, so I'm going to go down here to four and three fourths and trim that little bit off. I forgot about this little three, uh, this little edge here. So there we go, and we'll lay this down right there. Looky there. Right? So then we're going to use, out of our little die cuts, we're going to use this um, caterpillar again. I keep calling them a tomato, where maybe that's a Pueblo thing where I'm from. But I'm going to just take some dimensionals from the kit here, and I'm going to just put two kind of on the back end of him. We don't want him to be stuck to this section of the card, only to this section, and his back end can't go past 
this score line down here so we can still fold it. So I'm going to take it like that and just set him right here, except I see a dimensional hanging off the edge. I have to fix that. I don't want to see that dimensional. I think I can get it off and move it just a little bit. Yep, there we go. Put him right there just like that. And then the butterfly here. This is what I'm going to use to disguise, or I'm going to put it right on that score line, so then that way the score line's not quite so noticeable. And I am going to bend his wings just on either side of his body, and then with just some simple glue dots, which surprisingly did not come in the kit this month. <clears throat> but I'm sure if you're a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, you have more from last month. There's always tons in your kit. I'm going to just use the roll, but I'm going to put him right there on top of that there. Now we need our greeting. Remember we saved this piece. I am gonna use Melon Mumbo. Now this is the ink spot that came in the kit. I'm gonna use my standard pad just cause it's a little bit easier for me. And I have that time to celebrate. I'm gonna just take this. And I think I will like the lighter color here. So I'm gonna stamp it over in this corner. Now there's a score line on there. So I'm gonna stamp just under that score line. Try to get it as straight as I can. That looks pretty good. And then bring in my trimmer. And I'm going to start with my blade down here and set this. Now I'm going to just guess. I think that looks pretty good. Cut that piece. And then just with a pair of paper snips, I'll quickly trim this end and I think I'm gonna do it just at an angle to give it some character and then I'm gonna hang on to this piece well I'll show you because when I did the little bird I even used this little scrap for my little bird's beak right here I thought that was cute so I even used those little scraps too. try to use everything out of that paper pumpkin kit okay let me clean up a little bit I'm gonna take some dimensionals on the back of this piece and now I'm only gonna put them in the center because the two ends, I don't want to stick. Remember, it can only stick to the center piece so that this can fold like that. And I'm gonna lay that under the flowers so the flowers still show and it looks like that. So our card still has that bay window effect, but now we need a stopper right here. So I'm gonna take another dimensional and I'm gonna make sure that the flat side of the dimensional, in fact, I'm gonna just open this and laid my dimensional. I'm gonna try to get it centered here, but I'm gonna lay the flat side like this. So see how this is flat, and when your card lays against that, your card will be straight too, because it's flat, okay. And then one of these little flowers, I'm gonna take one of those and just cover up that dimensional. So looky there, look how cute. Love this layout for this kind of card. I can't find my other one. I don't know. Oh, here he's over here. So there is the one like this. So it lays flat like that. It still fits in the envelope that came with the kit, but yet you turn it into that bay window and it can sit on someone's desk. Love that idea. I'm even going to take my little caterpillar here maybe and bend his head a little bit so he goes over the bay window like that. Oh, and then last thing I almost forgot are those little pretty bling. Maybe I'm not because I can't find those now. Do I put them back in the box? No, they're out here on my desk somewhere. Okay, so when I find the bling, I'm going to put it along here, right here under the caterpillar, just like they called in the kit. That's what they suggested in the kit. I thought that looked really cute. So when and if I find... <laughs> that bling that I showed you earlier. Oh, look, here we go. I'm going to just take those little pebbles, throw them across the room first, brother, and just set those right. One, and then that gives your card a little extra bling there. There we go. 
Okay, so now the last card. I've showed you of all this stuff. I've showed you the moon. I've showed you the butterfly card. Now let's look at this flower card here. So the kit suggests that it looks something like this. Now again, I cut that card base down to five and a fourth by four so I could add that extra mat on there, that extra layer, and it looks like this. This is what the card base looked like. But then I took it and turned it into one of those tower um, pinwheel cards. So it looks like this. So you have the flower and you can watch it grow as the card goes. Is that not adorable? So let's, let me show you how I made this card that away. I'm going to set that aside for now. I have some paper cut here and now I used this Patterns Party Designer Series paper just because this paper matches the Designer Series paper in the kit so well I couldn't resist. But we need to um, score this piece. This is going to be our tower piece. So this is four and a fourth by four, no four and a half excuse me by four and I'm going to take it make sure this is the four and a half side up here and I'm going to score it now at one inch all the way across let me make sure one more time that I have the four and a half at the top here I do so I'm going to take it here at one inch and score and then at two inches and score and three inches here and score and then at four inches and that leaves me with a half an inch out here at the end. So let's go ahead and put our tower piece together. And I want the black on the inside because of the tower card when you go like this you can see how the inside is nice and matches and the outside of our tower or that rectangle piece there we're not going to see. So we'll have that be the stripes since it doesn't really matter. Now, if you score perfectly, good for you. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I'm gonna open my card. This is the half inch piece right here. But I'm gonna put the, like this. Hopefully, I can just put some tape here. But I wanna make sure that it also works if it's like this. And it looks like it does. So I'm gonna head and put some strong adhesive or my liquid glue again along that half inch between those score lines and the end and then lay that close like that and then look now we have that little tower that's going to start our card and it folds all four ways that's kind of important too I do suggest you do your tower if you do this card um, in different design that you do your tower and designer series paper just because it's thinner and it doesn't make your card too bulky when you make it okay so then I have a bunch of other papers here these are all Bermuda Bay these are four and a fourth four and a fourth yep by two and three fourths but then again if you don't have the measurements or if I'm wrong on the measurements you might want to double check my blog has all the right measurements so I'm gonna take my um, tape runner here and I'm going to put tape and it doesn't matter along the this side and then I'm going to open it and move it because I only want tape on this rectangle right here and I'm going to put tape right here so I have it along both sides like this making sure it's not overlapped and then I'm going to take and even move it this way again and line up this edge of my cardstock with that edge so they perfectly line up with my tower piece here. And look, I'm gonna show you a secret that I'm really embarrassed. I cut my tower piece at the wrong. It should be four and a fourth by four and a half, and I cut it at four, but it's gonna work out just fine. We just won't tell anybody <laughs> that I messed up. Okay, so now we have this piece here. We're gonna cover that in tape. I'll make sure that I have the right measurements on my blog too, because now I'm thinking about it. I wonder what my blog says if it has the wrong measurements. But now I have tape on this rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that my cardstock lines up top to bottom and I'm all the way to the edge of that tower piece and they line up and looky there. So we're going to do that all the way around. I'm going to turn it again. Now you can really see my mistake here. 
But when the card's all done, you won't even notice it. That's the cool thing about paper crafting is mistakes are easy to cover up. And trust me, I'm experienced enough with that stuff to know. Okay, last one, we're gonna just cover this with adhesive and then lay this one so they all line up top to bottom. And there we go. So now we have the base of our um, tower card, or our tower pinwheel card. So let's decorate these now. We need to cut this piece down. These, remember, are two and three fourths. So we wanna cut this down to four by two and a half. So let's first just cut off this top piece so that it's four inches. And get rid of that. And then we're gonna cut these down. And believe it or not, these pieces, this score line is already at two and a half. So this is gonna work out really nice. We're just gonna cut that piece off. And then we're gonna go two and a half again. And that's right at that next score line. And then this one, I'm gonna go ahead and cut at two and a half. Cause we're gonna use this flower on a piece. And then this piece, I'm gonna cut down to two and a half and then you'd have to decide now I want a place to write on my card so I'm going to take this piece and turn it over and I'm going to use this side as the fourth pinwheel like I showed you here that's where I got this piece was from the back okay so let's go ahead and put our pieces together bring in our card I'm going to start like the card like this and put these on here real quick. Take this and lay this one right here. And then this one. Then the other one. And then the last one, I want to stamp that butterfly on there real quick. So let me grab my little butterfly from the stamp set. And while I'm at it, I'm going to grab these um, words here. Oh, look, I found the birthday wishes are in this stamp. So these two stamps are mixed up because here's the I'm so proud of who you've become are on this. Um, so that's where I screwed up my stamps. Now I can go back and stamp the other card inside. But for now, I'm going to take my Mel and Mumble ink and that little butterfly. And I think I want the darker strip of the green at the bottom and the smaller strip at the top. So I'm going to stamp him down just like that. And then grab this banner right here. And stamp those words on there. Make sure they're not upside down. And I'm going to center them on here as best I can without getting my head in the camera. There we go. So we'll put this one down on that last section of our card here. There we go. So now, just like I did with the inside pen, I cut some designer series paper. These are four inches by one and a half. There again, better check my blog, make sure that I'm right. But I'm pretty sure that's the size of these, and I have four of them. I'm gonna lay them right here in this area here. And see how well it matches with this paper here? Take this. And did I tell you that this is the um, oh, Patterns Party Designer Series paper? It's gonna retire here soon, but it's part of the host. So if you have a, your sales are a party up to $150 or you place an order up to $150, you can get this free as your stamp rewards. 
we're going to lay that down. Although if you didn't have this designer series paper, you could put a pretty flower there. You could even put just a plain black there. You could probably stamp some flowers and put other things there. There's lots of ways you could decorate this kind of card. There we go. Now let's put our little tag on there. I'm going to just take, because I think the card is thick enough as it is, I'm going to just take and put some tape runner on our little tag here like that. Now in this case, you have to be careful, and I don't think I got it lined up. You can't go past this score line here. You have to keep your tag. There we go. Because that way when the card opens, it has to have room for that tag to get in there. Okay, again, that little bling, you can see the three here at the bottom. I'm going to do that again. Well, maybe. There we go, look. And then the last thing, the last final touches to this card, I'm gonna take some of these brass butterflies. Now these are in the annual catalog now and actually carrying over, which makes me very happy because I'm happy I'm gonna be able to get some more of these. But I'm gonna take these and I'm gonna just put three. So three shows. Now I'm gonna do it a little different than I did my sample card because after I looked at it, I thought it needs a little bit more. So I'm really gonna put three so that you can see all three on each panel. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So now I have the three there. You can see all three this way. This way I have one here. I'm gonna put another one down here. And then, let's see, this one, I think I'm gonna put it up here in the corner and I'm gonna put a little one up there like this. So then I have the three on that panel, just like on this panel. And then on this panel, we have the one. I'm going to add another little butterfly down here in the corner. And put another little butterfly maybe over here. And then we have our three there too. And then this one will just have the one and the stamped butterfly. So there you go. Look how cute that is. And how see, easy those pinwheels come together. So now when you do the pinwheel card like this, you have these flowers like this left over. So you notice with my die cuts here, I have all of this is all that's left over. Now those two um, clouds I'm going to use on another, I'm going to make another little bird card. So I'll use those two clouds, but these three pieces are left over. So let me show you what I did with those. I took and used them on a card like this. I think this turned out so cute. So let me tell you what I did. I did take that flower there. Where's it? Here it is. And I did fussy cut and trimmed off the leaves and then I added them down here. I thought they looked better. Let me show you the difference. And then the leaf up here, they needed to be moved down here. The stamp set that I used for this is that Wildflower Path. Now this is in an annual catalog and available right now, but it's also carrying over and will be available in the new catalog. I love this stamp set. So I use this stem here, here, and I use the grass for this part here. Um, the stamps are just right out of the stamp set. You saw me use this one. When I put that little, um, let me show you how I did him. When I put the little caterpillar onto my block, I just took like this, and I kind of bent him a little bit. So it looks like he's climbing up that stem. I thought that was a really cute way to use the little caterpillar. You can take your clear mount blocks like this and kind of bend them as you put them on your block. And then you can use them in different directions. I did color them with a few blends. I used, it looks like I used pumpkin pie and dark oh, and pale papaya for my, and, and um, gray, for my butterflies and for my little caterpillar here. And I used the blending brush with some balmy blue ink for my sky. I just put a little bit of um, blue on the sky there. And I did use Granny Apple Green, which is just another color of the kit 
for my grass here. And then with those little yellow flowers that I had left over, look, I just did the inside about the same way. A little bit of blue, balmy blue, with the blending brush on top, I stamped that grass. I stamped a different stem. I stamped one a little bit lighter or a little bit thinner here and put those little yellow flowers for the inside of my card, which I thought turned out really cute. So I can still make another one of those. I'm excited about that. But let me bring in, see if I can get in camera. Like I said, I've lost my, um, my view of my hands. Usually I can see where my hands are and my internet probably died. Who knows? Maybe I'm not even taping right now and I'm going off and on on nothing. Bring in that pinwheel card. We'll lay this pinwheel card down so you can see the two of them. And then we have the bay window cards. <coughs> Excuse me. And we have the fancy fold cards. We have the moon card. We have the Rachel Tessman card. Like I said, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know the measurements. And I have to go fin my or fix my tower measurements they'll all be on my blog be created with kathy.com if you have any questions regarding paper pumpkin be sure and reach out if you're interested in maze kit be sure and subscribe you can um, subscribe and become a subscriber to get a subscription every month and paper pumpkin just automatically bills and comes to your front door or you could go to my online store and purchase a kit they'll give you the code you put the code in and that way when paper pumpkin ships out on may 15th you'll have your paper pumpkin kit in the mail as well okay i probably don't know if i made any sense all the pictures of my cards are on my blog too um, give me a few minutes after the video posts and i'll get the blog post done too I think that's everything. Good Lord. Okay, I'll see you back here on Thursday for another video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you back here, like I said, on Thursday. Bye-bye.